up YouTube? In today's video, I'm going to give you a little bit of history about Samhain or Halloween or how the two are kind of mushed together to a new, a new age modern um, calendar holiday that has been really commercialized, but it's still lots of fun for everyone involved and how turnips have anything to do with any of that. Carving pumpkins, trick-or-treating, and wearing scary costumes are some of the time-honored traditions of Halloween. Yet, the Halloween holiday has its roots in the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. Samhain is a pagan religious celebration to welcome the harvest at the end of summer, when people would light bonfires and wear costumes to ward off ghosts. In the 8th century, Pope Gregory III designated November 1st as a time to honor saints. Soon after, All Saints Day came to incorporate some of the traditions of Samhain. The evening before All Saints Day was known as All Hallows Eve, and later Halloween. In current times, the pagan festival is now marked as an official calendar holiday that we now know as Halloween, celebrated starting when the sun goes down on October 31st to when the sun goes down November 1st. This marks the official end to summer, harvest is done, and all of the year's food supply has been gathered. It is said that the barriers between the physical and spiritual world were breachable during this time, allowing spirits to interact with the living. People would dress up in scary masks and costumes to not be recognized as one of the living by the wandering spirits, but to make the spirits think that they were one of them. This is what we now do on Halloween night in modern times. We dress up in scary or sometimes cute costumes to celebrate. Offerings or treats were often left out for the spirits passing through the villages and fields. Sound familiar? We give treats to those who are wandering door to door today. Trick or treat! There is folklore about an Irish blacksmith named Jack. Jack was a sneaky trickster who wasn't a very kind man. He was a drunk gambler, an underhanded double dealer. One night, he was gambling with the devil. The devil won the game they were playing, and Jack had to forfeit his soul. Somehow, Jack convinces the devil to let him live another year. In a year, when the devil comes to gather his winnings, which was Jack's soul, Jack says, hang on, let's go for a drink first. Jack convinces the devil somehow to turn himself into a coin so Jack could use it to buy himself more drinks, and the devil does this. Jack is so stingy, he picks up the coin and puts it into his pocket where he also carries a silver cross, and he leaves. Being in the pocket of stingy old Jack next to a silver cross leaves the devil powerless, and he could not go back to his original form. Jack tells the devil that he will let him go only if he promises to not come back for Jack's soul for another 10 years, and the devil agrees. 10 years go by, the devil returns to collect Jack's soul once again. That smooth-talking trickster Jack convinces the devil to go up into a tree. While he's up there, Jack carves a cross into the tree. The devil can't get out of the tree because he can't go past the cross, and Jack tells the devil that he will let him out of the tree if he promises not to take his soul. The devil agrees because he can't just sit in a tree forever. Jack finally dies years later, but because he was such an awful man, God would not let him into heaven. Jack got to the gates of hell after being turned down at heaven's door, and the devil was not about to let Jack come in, especially because they had agreed that the devil would not take his soul. The devil handed Jack a piece of coal from the fires of hell and sent him on his way to wander the land restlessly. Jack used a turnip that he had carved to hold the burning coal to carry with him to light his way. This is how we now have the tradition of carving pumpkins and why they are called Jack-O-Lanterns. The tradition was to carve turnips just like Jack had to do to carry his coal. As years passed and we twisted the traditions to fit better into our modern commercialized world, we began carving pumpkins as they were much easier to carve and turnips were not as plentiful. We don't use coals from the fire to light up our pumpkins, today we use candles. It is thought that we carve spooky and scary faces into our pumpkins to scare off wandering spirits during the night of Hallow's Eve. You can imagine how excited I was when I came across these huge turnips growing in an area of our property that we call the graveyard. I mean, it's totally fitting, right? I'm not kidding. This is where we throw extra seeds that are loose in my pocket or plants that are nearly dead that we pick up for 20 cents at the store. I put them out into the graveyard, which is right next to the highway, and I just forget about them. I don't water them. I don't weed them. Straight neglect. I'm always so surprised at how everything I put out there, neglect and all, it just thrives. Not only thrives, but does better than the produce I spend hours tending to all summer long. 
I think the graveyard should probably be a lesson for me for my gardening from here on out. Maybe I should just let the outside do what it does without intervention from me at all. Clearly these turnips didn't need me. They are five times the size of the turnips that I planted up in the garden. And next year I hope to have even bigger turnips. As I carve my jack-o'-lanterns from my giant turnips that I grow in the graveyard by the highway, I listen to Samhain history and traditions to learn everything I can learn. Originally, the Feast of the Dead was celebrated in Celtic countries by leaving food offerings on altars and doorsteps for the wandering dead. Today, a lot of practitioners still carry out that tradition. Single candles were lit in a window to help guide spirits of ancestors and loved ones home. Extra chairs were set at the table and around the hearth for unseen guests. Apples were buried along roadsides and paths for spirits who were lost or had no descendants to provide for them. Turnips were hollowed out and carved to look like protective spirits, for this was a night of magic and chaos. The wee folk became very active, pulling pranks on unsuspecting humans. Traveling after dark was not advised. People dressed in white, like ghosts, wore disguises made of straw, or dressed as the opposite gender in order to fool the nature spirits. This was the time that the cattle and other livestock were slaughtered for eating in the ensuing winter months. Any crops still in the field on Samhain were considered taboo and left as offerings to the nature spirits. Bonfires were built, originally called bone fires, for after feasting the bones were thrown into the fire as offerings for healthy and plentiful livestock in the new year, and stones were marked with people's names. They were then thrown into the fire to be retrieved in the morning. The condition of the retrieved stone foretold that person's fortune in the coming year. Hearth fires were also lit from the village bonfire to ensure unity, and the ashes were spread over the harvested fields to protect and bless the land. Samhain lore by Akasha. That's super cool, right? Tonight, I will display our carved turnips in the windowsills with a single lit candle. Even though these turnips are pretty big for me, they aren't large enough to hold a candle inside of them to help see their spooky faces. Goals for next year, though, grow turnips large enough to hold a tea light candle. I will also set out some apples for the lost and wandering dead. Since there are two fields of corn around us that have not yet been harvested as I type this this morning, on the morning of Halloween, the nature spirits will have plenty of food. Fields and fields of corn. I will use the insides of my turnips for a yummy fall meal that I will prepare today as well to have for supper tonight when we are all done with our modern day beggar's night or trick or treating. Our kids will run door to door gathering so much candy we will come home with cold noses and fingertips and have a nice warm meal at the end of the day. Of course, I will share that recipe with you here. Just go to the description. Give it a try. I hope you have a great Samhain or Halloween or whichever you prefer. If you learned something today and would like to comment or even share this video, I would truly appreciate it. It would make my whole entire day. That's all I've got for you guys today. Happy Halloween. Goodbye.